You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Got it. There you are. Yeah, no, I don't know if I'm getting a... I don't know if I... I, what's the difference between like eczema or plaque psoriasis? What? I don't know. I'm getting like uh, just go to a doctor. Rashy. No, no, I'm not going. No, fucking. This is how it starts. We talked about this. I get a fucking colonoscopy. I get blood work. It's all like I just paid fucking three hundred and fifty-eight dollars. I'm insured. Just for the guy I had to drive way out of my way to Palomino's to fucking get set up for. Wait, I already know I have to go for a colonoscopy. Why do I have to go drive to Palomino's 25 minutes away for you to go? Yeah, looks like uh, you're getting set up for a colonoscopy. I go, yeah, that's what I thought I was coming here for. No, you just tell me that and then charge me three hundred fucking eighty five dollars. No, I get fucking. What kind of insurance do you have? Because that doesn't sh- happen to mine. What? Hang on, I got to turn your volume up. All right, go Ooh. ahead. Well, can you? How's that? Test, test. One, two. Yeah, yeah. Hello. I got it. I got it. I, I was, I'm just yelling at you. But anyway, the point is, I, I never shaved because uh, it always irritates my face. But now I'm getting. And you know what? According to the commercials, if I have fucking plaque psoriasis, I have mild. And all the commercials. Hold on a second. What's plaque psoriasis? I don't fucking know. Oh, okay. But I it sounded like you knew. Drugs, all the drugs, Chaley, they cure moderate to severe. Yeah. <laughs> and if this is like, this is just mild, well, no, nothing cures mild. You just have to have a fucking irritating spot on your face that you keep picking at. Where our fucking jig is up, Chaley. I don't know if you know. Uh, I don't even want to say I was an ice thief at Safeway. Uh oh. I was a. I liberated ice, and I did it. Kind of like Robin Hood, if you want to be honest. I was basically like Robin Hood because Safeway, these cunts, or Kroger or Albertsons, they're all the same fucking stink with a different name. They're the same. What they do is they, oh, you have to get the app to get, oh, do you want fucking uh, 100 pounds of chicken for 15 cents? Uh, And that's the one thing. But you have to have a really expensive phone. Well, you know what? If you can afford a thousand dollar phone to get the digital app, then you don't need a thousand pounds of chicken for a nickel. The point is, I would be very upset when they had these sales only for people who can afford a smartphone. Because as you know, with the fucking diphtheria hordes of fucking homeless, diseased fucking tweakers in the parking lot, you know what? They're the ones that actually need the nickel chicken, but they can't get it because they don't have a fucking app where they can scan. And so you, so forever, I was, I was being Matt Beckerish in my like luddite with a purpose vision of fuck you. I'm not getting your app. I'll, I'll just steal to make up for it. So what I would do is uh steal a bag of ice every time i needed ice which was when you when you would walk out after you'd buy your groceries you would walk past the ice machine load up as if you'd pay for it and if you get caught you go oh i thought i told them to put it on the. yeah i did tell them no i absolutely did tell them didn't you hear me jaylee yes oh i thought bingo told him while i was doing a thing yeah you know what if i go to their toilet it's free and they have water they all you did is freeze it it's really it's and you know what i didn't get your fucking nickel chicken deal because i don't have i do have a smartphone in fact i finally have one that will scan an app i mean or scan a thing a fucking qr code qvc code yeah i got it and but i still been stealing the ice with the people in the parking lot do you remember Chaley I don't know if I ever told you this on the podcast it's when I knew I needed help 
redoing a Safeway. They were remodeling and doing a, like a lot of construction. They right. were at night. They were they were actually moving aisles, redoing floor that was bad, and then moving all the products to different aisles. So every day you'd go in there and stuff would be different. Yeah, and I do go and in every day. The employees didn't even know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, it was it was awful. Uh, but I remember they had a porta potty set up out front, mm. and it took me a minute because like the homeless fucking tweaker element has. Uh, they've always been around, but in the last few years, like overwhelming, like the parking lot where, you know, build the wall, build the wall or something. You, you, all right. I, when I knew the names of the homeless people, hey, there's Brokey's out again. He's yelling at traffic. But yeah, when it got to yeah, these kids today with their homelessness and they don't even ask you for anything. You see, well, you can't just live here. I understand targets of opportunity. It's one of the few places you could beg change, but you're not begging change. You're tweaking out. You're talking to yourself behind a fucking trash can. And that's when they had porta potties out front. And for a minute, I'm only thinking about the fucking tweakers. And I go, they better not have put those fucking porta potties out for the homeless. And immediately dialed back in. Really? All right, is that what you've become, Stanhope? A guy that doesn't want the homeless to have adequate shitting situations? They should shit out in the street and on a piece of cardboard like my grandfather's homeless. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, so so I stole ice, and uh, but I mean you've and, been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah, for for a lot of years. Liberating ice. Yeah, and uh, and if, if poor people asked me for ice, I would have given them some. <laughs> Doug, when they hold their cup out, it's not for ice; it's for change. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, what happens is our girl Susie. I see her once, and then uh, she's a I, checker at Safeway. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we talk about her. She's the antithesis to Sherry. Susie is the best. Sherry's the worst. Sherry won't retire. She's past her retirement and then just keeps coming in because this is her social hour. Like, no one wants to fucking talk to you, you fucking <laughs> hag. Anyway, so Susie, I'm going through Susie's line. Uh, and uh, I, I actually, this time, I literally only bought salmon. I, I'm I'm going back up to the north house and uh, I got salmon. I'm just standing there with just salmon. She goes, "Did you want me?" She's a friend of ours, yeah. mind you, and uh, she comes around to hug you when you go us, me, and Bingo. Yeah. So for her to say, "And did you want me to charge you for a bag of ice as well?" Uh, and I said, "No, I'd just steal it if I needed it." She goes. I know that's why I'm asking. I go, ooh, are they on to me? She goes, they're on to you. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that's so, like the that's like the great pillow caper from the Four Points. When when Bingo would always take a ratty old uh, pillow in, we'd spend the night before a a, a, a trip at the airport, yeah. and then she'd walk out with a brand new Four Points pillow. And years later, when we were talking to one of the gals at the that works at the bar, yeah, they, told, they knew every uh, time. housekeeping says every time they stay here, the pillows disappear, or, or they get downgraded pillows in the room that we were in. Uh, that the yeah, I, I, I've been I've been trying to steal two rolls of toilet paper minimum for every day. I'm at this hotel now, uh, which has been extended. I don't know. I, I don't. Well, if I'm back in my house, I'll fucking tell you. But yeah. the one they put me in now, I extended the Marriott. I, they're still trying to fuck me on points for the last six weeks I've been there. I'm there till the end of September at least again. So, yeah, don't fucking ask me. When I'm back in the house, I'll tell you. It is looking good. There's progress being made. Uh, but I've been trying to steal two rolls of toilet paper a day for every day. And the, what's the goal there? 
I just remember Olivia Grace, when the pandemic happened and I got home, she had bought me online like 96 rolls of some, yeah, single ply shitty, but that was, that's a serious situation where people were hoarding toilet paper. It became one. We didn't know that initially. We didn't, but she was ahead of the curve with her uh, paranoia. Yeah, and she was at home. She was in Bisbee. So I, I, I showed up and like, oh, I get 96 rolls of fucking single ply gas station. It's prison paper. prison toilet paper. Prison toilet paper. But toilet paper nonetheless. Yes. Uh, and and that lasted. Uh, and a, a lot of this is because Bingo was over here at the quiet house. So just me and that toilet paper lasted well over a year. I I mean, I remember at the year mark going, I still have this and I want, and this is good toilet paper I'm taking now. I'm not stealing it. it well, it's not Charmin. It's still, it's still industrial toilet paper. No, it is fucking Angel Soft and Charmin. They're like, yeah. they, they, it depends on what made card. Wait, I don't know about the ones you steal from, or the ones you take from the, uh, the hotel. I've I seen would, the wrapping paper. There, there, the the angel. I think Angel is the, is on the Angel the, Soft. The, yeah. yeah, Angel Soft is a great brand. They're both fucking. Come on, this is a fucking. It's a residence. Goddamn in. They're not going to give you. The point is, I can. I will. I will come out with over a year's worth of toilet paper if I play it the way I'm. I'm playing it. Uh, and that's. It's a nice feeling to at least. After a fucking, I'm not saying a year because when it's if if it if it makes it to a year anniversary, to this Thanksgiving coming up, uh, November twenty first actually would be the one year. It's uh, I want to look up the the laws. I just uh, oh I ate meat tonight. I think this is the only second time I've eaten red meat since May. And uh, I ran out A1 sauce, which I also steal. Like when I was going to Denny's all the time, when I first had to move up north after the fire, I'd go to Denny's all the time. And I'd always ask for A1 sauce. And I'd, I still have like three bottles up there. What are the, the rules? I keep meaning to Google this, but I'll let you do it and send me the emails, people about stealing condiments that are free. Toilet paper in a hotel is free. These are free luxury. So at what point can they uh, 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 like press charges for you stealing something that they give away? Bibles, we kind of know the thing on Bibles is the, the Gideons put them in hotel rooms, hoping you're gonna take them. Probably not hoping you're going to sell them. Well, no, actually, no, they do hope that. because hey, we put more old. Bibles in, in the homes of heathens than the Gideons themselves. Yeah. Personally responsible for it. So, so yeah, let me know. Uh, yeah, let me know the, the rules on stealing condiments. So you're Again, saying, I, but you're not saying ketchup packets. You're saying, like, if you ask for uh, yes. well, no salt and pepper on the table, can you get me salt and pepper? And they bring it. Can you take the salt and pepper from the table? No, I'm talking about ketchup packets. Anything that they give for free, can't you just take all of it? Yeah. If they have, Taco Bell has wells of little packets of hot, mild Diablo. Diablo my ass. I'm taking it for free. And then it's spilling out from under your arms and... Uh, and, and then the guy is like helping you steal it. Like, oh, it's the, thanks for shopping at Taco Bell. Oh, you dropped something, sir. Yeah, it's mounds of your Diablo sauce. Please, please put it in a bag and follow me. I do I know that know. they only give you uh, like two per uh, flavor at the drive thru Well, they, they should. They, they and should. They, and then if you ask for one more, they give you a handful. <laughs> no, it's always the worst. Make, not if it makes the sense. Fucking waste at drive throughs. I, I, I remember when I was a wasteful person, it, it annoyed me. Like, oh, who needs 16 napkins for a McDonald's cheeseburger? It doesn't even drip. Like, <laughs> you, 
there's nothing moist about that. Yeah, it is. It, it is. You, you could give me a cheeseburger to wipe up, wipe my mouth after. Yeah, if I had a, a, a like a like the fucking filet mignon that I ate tonight, at least had a little bit of juice. I could use a McDonald's cheeseburger to tamp off, maybe cure this eczema. Plaque psoriasis would be funnier to have than eczema. Did you shave today? Perhaps that's a, a, a no. I shaved a few days ago, and that's the problem. The, the, lately, it's I don't know if it's humidity related. I haven't done anything different. I did eat butter tonight, and that could affect. But this that didn't happen after you ate butter, right? No, no, I ate butter after it happened. So I don't know. I'm off my diet a little bit because a I'm doubling up on the drugs they gave me that they say I don't need anymore. It don't it's my own fucking thing. I know how to self medicate. I know how to cheat these doctors. Uh, but I know we're going on the train. First of all, I really wanted to push this train thing on someone. I wish anyone was actually boots on ground in Bisbee that just lived here that I felt comfortable with that could try to walk me through uh, the the Instagram. Like I, I, I put out one thing from a year ago, us uh, hitting golf balls. I'm like, I'm going to try this video. And then the next day, Hennigan calls me like, you actually did a reel on Instagram. I go, well, I don't know how I did it because every time I try, and since then, yeah, I filmed like 40 seconds of me saying some shit and evidently it went out and only 12 seconds of it went out. Oh, it trimmed my video and I, I, what the fuck? I'm going on a train where I have been chaley. I have been watching these travelogue Amtrak things like, okay, let me reacquaint myself with the fucking sleeper cars and the roommates and the fucking what's happening. And I watch these the most boring travel logs. I go, we could have so much fucking fun. I bought all this shit. I bought the like the ring light, a six inch ring light with a fucking stand for my phone that can go in my room at card table and I could do travel logs, but not the boring shit they're doing. Oh, and the sleeper car is 36 inches wide and seven feet. How about fuck you? How about these assholes are fucking stacking up their luggage on top of my luggage? And I got my fucking Yahtzee board and I don't have room. And fuck you, $17 for a flute of fucking champagne? Here, here's, exactly, I can make it fun. 55 and a half. I don't know about fun, now it sounded angry. But I mean, that's fun for you. That's fun, yes, angry is fun. What they do, you know, when we are in a dining car and I I did tweet about this and this is what I, I, I really, wanted to push hey we're going up on august 28th on the texas eagle we're coming back on sunday the third on the texas eagle this goes from tucson wait 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 wait, wait. no you're not going up on the 8th 28th we leave 28th. august 28th yeah and uh the train goes through fucking el paso san antonio austin dallas st louis yeah, uh, like all these places where, hey, if it's if it's during the day or a reasonable hour, we did this the last time we took a train. Hey, bring your books by, and I'll, I'll get off at whistle stops oh, and sign right. your books. Yeah, and uh, uh, one guy already said, hey, I'm going to jump on to go from, like, San Antonio to Austin and then just fucking take the train back, or I don't know. It's, that's that's an hour away or something yeah. so yeah uh we're looking forward to that and here's the thing i looked up we have a sleeping car but just coach Pri- an amp- a private car that, that you have know, like bunk like we like we did before when we were on the california yeah it's yeah it's it, the, we're in a room that it's tight but we get free meals Point is, even coach, the coach seats on Amtrak are better than first class seats on airplanes. They have the full, the problem is, and, 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 and 
it was a hundred and twenty one dollars each way to f- go coach fifty five fucking hours <laughs> all the way from Tucson all the way up to Chicago fifty five hours in coach hundred and twenty one bucks problem is when it's hundred and twenty one dollars a lot of fucking felons are gonna be in the seats beside you and they don't care if they say don't smoke <laughs> in the bathroom don't drink your own alcohol and pass it over the seats to your other fucking biker buddies. I told you that one time that we, we uh, took, Tracy and I took the train from Union Station and to overnight uh, train trip from Union Station to uh, Benson. That's the post, that's, and there's basically a platform that they stop and Bingo was going to pick us up. Well, in the middle of the night from LA to, to Benson, like someone just yelled, who fucking shit their pants? Like at two in the morning, right? <laughs> God damn it. And you're, you're like, you wake up. Well, what the fuck? What the? And this guy just rallying. It's like, who the fuck shit their pants? And it's like, this is what you get. This is normal. No, there was no one who came in to say what was the problem. Everyone just kind of hunkered down. Okay, I don't, did I shit my pants? I don't know. Did I step in something? <laughs> this guy was fucking livid. And there's nothing. That, I mean, that's what you get when you're, when you're traveling overnight. I'm afraid, I'm afraid we already talked about this on a podcast. Like, we should never speak or all, uh, like, But I, I would love to do a train trip, like Kreischer does is doing the the booze cruise, not booze cruise, but an actual cruise. You can go a Burt Kreischer cruise. I think it would be funny to do a fucking. We take over an Amtrak because the coach is fucking fantastic. Everything about Amtrak is fantastic if you can take it over and sell it out before. They let all the fucking stabby crazy people on. Cause I could, I fucking, I've done cross country as a, as a youth. I did like uh, Worcester to LA. I did Worcester to uh, what? How many hours was Worcester to LA? What? How many hours was Worcester to LA? It's four days. Uh, and you're still doing this rocking for a few days afterwards. You just, it, it doesn't leave you. And then my dad and I did it in a sleeping car. I did round trip cross country with a uh, sleeping car with my dad and then coach on the way back. Um, yeah, I did that several times as a kid. And the fucking seats are amazing. And it's just two by two. There's no middle seat. Uh, and you, the cafe car is open all day, cocktailing. And of course, it's so easy to sneak your own booze on that. That's why you'll be yeah, everyone's you know, everyone's mewling fucking drugs. Of course, you can bring booze. Well, that happened. There was a fucking a murder in Tucson where fucking DEA came on and raided a fucking train and and spotted two guys and there was a shootout and I I don't know if they killed a cop or just a guy one of the guys who had had fucking weed on him like and it's weed is legal like this you really fucking I don't know all I know is Bingo and I are now we're in sleeper cars so uh we get free dinner in the dining cars so what that means is you go up to the dining car you arrange your uh time you reserve your time and then they seat you if you're a twosome they seat you with another couple and then you have to sit in a very close and nobody on amtrak like all those stabby people in the back i could have a conversation with like I wouldn't want to share the seat with them, but if we're going to have a meal, I can go, oh, yeah, what's up with that tattoo on your eyelid? Oh, it's on both your eyelids. They just blink in opposite times. Uh, they they have something interesting to tell you. Bingo just uh, came off a flight when she was flying back from wherever, and she... she uh, Denver. Uh, what, was she in Denver? 
Yeah, she was up seeing her sister, and uh, I picked her up, and she introduced me to the lady of a certain age that she had been drinking with the whole time on the flight from Salt Lake uh, on our connection, and, uh, and her husband was there to pick her up, and we both had the same car, and it was, because she flew coach, and you meet cool people in coach. Nobody talks to you in first class, which is kind of an unspoken rule that they should. Hey, do you want to make a friend? Fly coach, save a buck or two, and meet someone that, uh, yeah, first class? No, no, no eye contact. So, uh, so, but, so the dinners, uh, meals, it's uh, 55 hours each way. So it'll be 110 hours. This is if Amtrak doesn't fuck up like they always do and uh, make you a day late. So uh, 110 hours. Uh, that's uh, it's probably going to be a, a dozen meals with strangers. So we how, do. How like, many meals a day is it? Is it three? Three, Five yeah. Lunch, dinner? Yep. All right. So what we do on trains has always been since even before bingo, Renee and I uh, was the, what lie are we going to tell him about what we do for a living? Cause that's sure. where you're from. We could lie about that. What you do is what we lie about on the road. And that's where, I don't know where we reuse this a couple times, but that was the origination of when Renee and I told a couple we do uh, Christian pornography, <laughs> where it's uh, it's like pornography, but it always ends in conception, and the the money shot is the delivery of the baby, uh, <laughs> and I I don't I don't know how we held on to that uh, without. But the idea is to do what we do on the road. You check into a hotel. Uh, oh, are you here for a business or pleasure? A oh, business. We, yeah, we repair uh, shopping carts with wiggly wheels overnight. That was a good one. Yeah. And we and then we had Bible salesmen because we always had the Bibles. Oh, and uh, another something like that. Oh, we're in a Christian rock band. We don't <laughs> believe that shit, but that's where the money is. So yeah, we're working on that. Uh, we're working on uh, just packing. I'm trying to be minimalist, but I have to have one show. Uh, they, they must know the movie's premiering for a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. There's ads in the in the uh, in the podcast, and uh, yeah, that's that's the reason you're going to Chicago. Yeah, and the reason we're taking the train is because that makes it a vacation. Because we got two and a half days up there, four nights there, and then two and a half days. Unless Amtrak fucks us over, which they have so many times. I think from the first time, second time I took Amtrak, I've been fucked almost every time. Last time we had to take a plane for part of it because they go, oh, we're delayed so much. We're going to put you on a bus from fucking the, uh, <laughs> out in the outskirts of, to all the way to fucking Dallas or some shit. I'm like, fuck oh, this. Man. We'll just go to a... a, a, a I'll catch up with your train later. Well, passenger trains don't have priority. Like we've, we've talked about this before because yeah. in Canada, when we got waylaid for over 24 hours, the freight owns the lines. Amtrak rents the line or rents the use of it. So yeah, yeah anything that goes wrong, uh, uh, freight, you got to get those strawberries to the East coast, you know, and that's, that's you're, you're, uh, you're basically a meat bag cargo. No one gives a shit. Yeah, well, if if we get delayed and someone says supply chain to me, I'm going to fucking smash a glass and cut their face. I'm like, no, supply chain cuts in front of me getting here. And I'm the supplies that need to be here. Uh, we have a podcast studio. I would love to read you. Uh, Gary Lucy. Like we have keys to this podcast studio. It's like 400 square feet of rental space over there across from the you're, city. You're not in it and I'm not in it. This is something totally new. Yeah. And uh, Christine Levine's new boyfriend, who we all know, Gary, uh, I've known him since the 90s, is a sweetheart. He is a, a, a bit of a mental defective, not as bad as me with addictions or anything. He just has some 
quirks and takes and slightly autistic is how uh, uh, Christine phrases it, which no one I don't think really knows what autism is, but we all have a feeling when you say autism, you get the picture. I don't know if it's a real thing, the same way I don't think addiction is a real thing, but if you say it in a certain way, the other person gets it. So so he's been like uh, suggesting different things for uh, accoutrements, for sound dampening and things in the mm-hmm. studio. And Oh, here's some things you can buy. And I go, oh, those are cool and cool colors because we want it to not look cheap. And yeah, both those, it was like a house green. Uh, it's like the little house, green and aqua. Uh, anyway, and then he's like, what about... Here's the carpet that uh, the dogs have been peeing on for a month. Uh, for uh, uh, since, and I'm like, that probably not the pee rug. I, I don't. I can't tell if he's kidding. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, autistic whatever. Sounds like he, someone trying to get rid of a rug they don't want. Well, no, it's fucking. Yeah. You know how goddamn filthy Christine Levine's house was before <laughs> she got cancer. Thank God, and it saved her from dying in a hoarder's paradise. Because she was too fat to fucking, and those dogs she babysat all these. I went in there to drop off groceries once during quarantine, and they had like dug through all the like almost down to the wires of the couch, getting so excited because fat people don't walk dogs, and I I never walk dogs, but these are dogs that needed to be walked. This is awesome. Who she's babysitting for backdoor Mike, and her own fucking stupid. Labra fool fool No, it's uh, isn't that a basset hound? Basset hound, whatever. Yeah. It's a giant and, and dog. Awesome is a, a rather stout uh Staffordshire terrier. Yeah, and they Pitbull. jump up on the couch to see who is walking by. Yeah. And then and then then you drop off groceries and the it's just piss and shit and fucking you don't even know what oh it's I hope he's going to clean it up. Like, Gary's a fucking great cop. No, you said that was before, though. The quarantine. That was. Well, he showed me a picture when he's saying, hey, for the new studio, there's dog pee on it, but we could clean it up. I'm like, no, I, I, I'll spend the money. It's 400 square feet. Yeah. I think, uh, we can make it look cool for all of us. And then uh, as the questions kept coming, even from Bingo and Dave Rader, I'm like, listen. We have to wait till Chaley gets home because he's going to be fucking cunty about the sound and the this and the bouncing off that and the fucking. And I know we don't need most of it, but we can take half of his suggestions and placate him. And, I don't know uh, about cunty. I think that it, it really is a thing that if you don't have any carpeting on the ground, you're going to get kind of an echoey sound in that room. I mean, that's not cunty. That's basically that's audio science. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, how many different microphones have we had over the course of this podcast? I know it's been like 11 years, but how many times have we just like lately decided we should always just have the lavalier microphones? Yeah, that's what I'm using now. Well, okay, look, what happens is is we get something and it's it like the the SM58s like the microphone you use on stage those are great but you know you have to hold them then when we got into a studio we got the uh, SM7Bs from sure those are the best and they're great and those we use those for a couple of years and then okay. we move to to different ones but i mean it's because can, can we is, talk about our bu- our business is sound Doug you know, we go we go to these clubs that have a um, a microphone and a PA system that wouldn't even be good at a fucking kid's fucking clown party, you know, and their business is sound, too. And it's embarrassing when you don't have the right equipment. And this is what you do is you put words into a microphone that gets recorded and then people listen to it. We should at least have good equipment. OK, well, yeah, sound is the number one thing. I, I'm sorry, that except, did sound a little cunty, <laughs> except, except now we're doing video. So I want, uh, like, uh, if we're going to do video, nobody is comfortable on video yes. since the days where we 
I mean, or comfortable enough. Well, speak, Chad speak, will do for your, it. speak for yourself, okay? Because Chad, that's, that's really what Chad you mean. Chang. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't want to see yourself. So, yes, the mood lighting, if we can look like the star chamber, that's a very, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a deep track. But what's, uh, what's star chamber? It was a movie. It was on, it, it was on the uh, cult section. Uh, uh, oh, shit. I have to plug these things. Uh, uh, the, wait, wait, the, finish what you're doing. We, we'll get to plugs. All right. Uh, telemarketers is a, a sorry. I said movie. So telemarketers on HBO is fucking. I want it. We, we have to get the guy that did this series uh, with me and Tom Kanopka to do a podcast all together. Watch find telemarketers on HBO or they call it Max now. You know, at what point do you go, fuck you, I'm not calling HBO Max, I'm not calling Twitter X, and fuck you, uh, I'll be dead before you notice a change. What was I saying, Jaylee? Uh, we were talking about microphones and equipment, and I said, I did sound like I became a little yeah. cunty there, but it, it is it is a thing where, where, you know, there's a lot of, especially because of the pandemic, a lot of new equipment came out, you know, the, the board we use. Uh, wasn't in existence four years ago, you know, and stuff just comes around and you try different things and you, you're constantly tweaking. And that's, we finally have decided that you like to walk around and get off mic. So oh, yeah. having that's a cool. lavalier mic makes sense for you. All right. So I don't, I don't know if I talked to you about this or uh, someone when I was showing them the, where the kitchen is going to be at, back, at the, the, and, the at, I, at the compound. Yeah, and I'm like, fuck, you know what? I would love to do, not as a cooking show, but as though it could be a cooking show where I could have, you know, one, two, or three, four guests at that butcher's block where I'm on the other side, and we could have GoPros, which I'm fine with that fisheye fucking lens of me. It doesn't show that I have fucking gangrenous sore. Don't pitch at it. I know I'm not. It's fucking when my hair grows back in and I shave. But if I don't shave, like if I could grow a beard, I don't know. But the point is, I was blocking this out. I don't know, for Raider or whoever. I'm like, that way I can stand up. I can move. I can go to a cabinet. I have lavalier mics. And that's the first thing uh, I... Uh, I don't know if it's Gary Lucy or someone I fucking looked up. Oh, well, as long as you have the the whatever microphone with the uh, spit screen or whatever windscreen no that's not what i'm thinking i was thinking about labs so i can move i can go to get a drink like i can't do right now talking about this yeah some that's pinned to you so that's i can wireless walk wireless yeah like i would on stage yes no like you would on the set of uh of, of good morning america or whatever those things you used to do yeah, yeah, I was always on Good Morning America, and uh, I'm uh, I'm debating about. Uh, I I watched the uh, two minute trailer for the movie that they finally put out, uh, the Road Dog movie, which is going to yeah. premiere the first to the eighth at the Pickwick Theater in Chicago. Yeah, Park Ridge, Illinois, and uh, that's Chicago. Yeah, and. I, 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 two minutes of watching myself was more than I could handle <laughs> in a good mood, whereas acceptable to uh, the, the process. And I, oh, go, did you watch the, the trailer that they released? Yeah, two minutes okay, and yeah. six seconds. It's and good. I go, All right, that's, that's enough. But is it enough to do a QA on? I want to get junior. I have to do a q and I don't have to. I'm doing this out of my own pocket because I want to be there. Well, I, my movie's going to be playing in a theater for a week. And so I'm a movie star technically. And technically, I went to the premiere of my movie and did a Q&A after. That's, it's all about story value. But, you, but I mean, you, but I don't want to watch the Q&A. The Q&A is going to ask you questions about filming the movie. Not, I mean, you don't have to watch the movie to to, to participate in Q and A. People want to ask you questions about the experience. 
Yeah, but I, I don't remember things, you see. Like, if I watched a movie and yeah. they did a Q&A, I would go, oh, yeah, that scene sucked. But if you go, <laughs> hey, what was it like? I go, I don't know. Like, I know it snowed one day, and I was happy that we didn't have to film. It was, like, two days because the city shut down. I was so happy not to. You'll make to something work. funny just by, by, but no, I, here, by no, ramping I'm thinking, on a question. No, but I'm thinking that it would be funny to get a junior stop go as a plant to just ask me this a fucking confederate this, in the audience just ask me ridiculous loaded questions that i have down pat quick answers for do you think cloud seeding is uh, spreading the uh, uh non-gmo i don't know <laughs> like just well, I mean, we we do need to say that uh, Junior lives in Chicago. That's that's why it would be uh, convenient as well. Oh, Which hey, is- Chicago. Sorry uh, if you saw us at Brower House. Honestly, uh, uh, two of the most fun shows I had ever in comedy was, yep, another comedy show with four white males was... Uh, yeah, uh, that was with Junior. God damn it, I can't remember his fucking name. Come on, the 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 the, Crypt the, Daddy. the dwarf. No, Crypt Daddy's oh, the, the other dead one. Uh, Adam something. Yes, Adam Gilbert. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, that was the, those were two of the most fun nights of my career, and uh, we know that fucking Crypt Daddy was gonna die, and he died. Uh, he evidently he Eddie he had headlined a show and they brought him out afterwards and he was eating lazy. This is what I heard, and uh, uh, swallowed some food into his lungs, <laughs> which is what was happening with Bingo when she was. Bingo was uh, having that same kind of situation yeah, when she aspirate. was. Uh, yeah, we can't yeah. give her any. So uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Crip Daddy is dead. He's got a GoFundMe, which I did not promote because. Uh, if you saw my last special, yeah, you're fucking saving money by not having to just give, of all people, give that guy's body to science. You don't need a fucking funeral for money, and you know that family is not using his funeral money for a funeral. That guy's (laughs) already been fucking launched out of a trebuchet into the neighbor's yard they're having a feud with. (laughs) They're fucking here. You throw it away. Using that GoFundMe <laughs> money for fucking natty lights, honey. There you are. Hi. Can you get me a goddamn drink with some ice? Make sure I'm not on that mug. Well, just don't get in front of the camera. You're tricking me into seeing my butt. Oh, I'm no, <laughs> don't worry. Don't we? We no, need no, less we Patreons. My... Oh my God, Chaley, we're gonna have such a the business meetings. Tell me we're what gonna you're have. First, baby. Uh, I don't know. Whatever you got. Uh, yeah, I killed I'm this surprised. whole thing. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll surprise you. Yeah, you, you get me something I nice. Got it. I got it. Yeah, we're going to have Patreon meetings. We have to have merch meetings. We're going to break down everything once we're back in the house. Uh, yeah, and we're going to fucking be putting some shit up. I'm going through like the 20th anniversary of Deadbeat Hero and all the the stuff. I want to be able to put shit out uh when when is the 20th anniversary of debbie hero 2024 oh no oh, oh fuck it. man oh. what happened i was uh no, here no, show i'm not done taking the bath show show me just give me a piece of that glass because sorry Careful, show me. Don't, you don't, oh, you don't have to show me how great I, this glass i'm sorry like baby. this was a full giant rocks glass <laughs> With do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah, it was. Why are you asking a girl to make why, me why, why don't you just get out of here and go put on shoes? Okay. Go. Tracy never breaks glasses. You know, Tracy's the best. And I really feel strongly about her decision to never come back from Austin. I think it's up she, to her. Yeah, she's uh, she I made her for her mind. It's a strong call. It's kind of like the way. Uh, people south of the border, all the way down into Central America, 
uh, uh, and Venezuela even, they, they, they make the pilgrimage to come up here to send money back to their relatives. Mm -hmm. It's the same way Tracy has gone to Austin to make all this capital and There's send most or all of it back to us and just keep working. Otherwise, she's going to get, you know, she has to do. So please don't just sponsor the mothership. Tip heavily because that <laughs> money comes back to us. I'm going to check my uh, telemarketers. I really want to do that podcast of me and Tom Kanopka and uh, Sam Lippman Stern from that uh, telemarketers HBO special. It's a three parter. I haven't seen part three, but I'm I am going to watch that this weekend. Cause I'm actually, I'm, I'm off for the weekend. I have two days off right now. You said you were house sitting and that means you should be off all the time. No, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm working in my brother's shop while he's a, he's gone. We're, we're in crunch time here, brother. No. But since he's gone, everyone's off for Saturday and Sunday. So I'm off too. Well, I might be on the lamb. You leaving, you're leaving tomorrow or Sunday? Tonight is Friday. We go back up to Tucson Saturday. Uh, stay at the North House. Uh, the and then Sunday you're you're getting that that other hotel near the station. Yeah, it's just so we because yeah. early morning train if it's on time, and uh, then we get back allegedly Amtrak. You have no idea how fucking wrong Amtrak is. If you guys fly and you go. Uh, one time your flight's delayed five hours, you're like, this is bullshit. That is generally Amtrak is so fucking delayed. There, or yeah, they, there's, the there's not, no one even looks at a complaint where it says we were delayed five hours. No one and will call that, you back. If you see a Amtrak derailed and people died, half of those people were like, thank God I'm out of my misery. <laughs> All the people that died were like, uh, well, it was just going to get worse if I, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Yeah. We have, uh, we have, we have, we have high hopes. We have high hopes. You get back the day after us and uh, yeah, we'll I'm see. scheduled. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we I, still I, have. I can't uh, remember if it's early or not. I might come back that night, or I might come back the next day. But it all depends. We still have airline tickets. I was gonna take the train up and fly, yeah. nonstop back on an airline that is not Delta that sucks. Uh, and then I, then I was like, ah, I love the train if it works well. Uh, so maybe so now I, if the train ride up sucks, that's what we're gonna try to do our travel journal on is the yeah. right uh, and, and if it sucks then we could just jump on the saturday plane and uh, otherwise we take the sunday train we're home around the same time we're home yeah. in time for football but you, are you do, are you just gonna send me the videos so that i can post them because yeah, i can put them right on patreon yeah this is the problem Chaley. what's the problem i i, I need someone who can fuck I could take an hour. I could fucking videotape this entire podcast we just did. Or I can 40 seconds of something. And when I try to get it out of my phone and send it fucking anywhere. Oh, okay. It's just, oh, it, we have to trim it. We have to trim it down to the point it doesn't make fucking sense. So yeah, we'll get 12 seconds of you going, hey, if anyone was worried about the thing that I just said, here's the... And that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what you fucking put out on Instagram. And I can't, don't fucking know how to fix it. But then one day, uh, 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 Hennigan says, oh, yes. Yeah, you, you put something out on Reels. That's so good of you. Well, I don't know how the fucking difference is. You have no idea what you did, so. And then a lot of times I trim it and I send it to Bingo. And she gets a short version that is all the things remember i complained about my last phone 
where I go, don't send me videos because it just looks like yeah, 1999 yeah. buffering fucking, I can't even tell what, you know, morbid thing. The, and so when it trims videos, a lot of times it just does. I can't, it's not showing up on there. I, no, that's, uh, no, I tried that's... to say, I tried to, I tried to send you a, uh, the, um, what did I try to send you? I tried to send you uh, a document earlier for ad reads and uh, your phone won't accept it. So I had to email it. My phone won't accept it. I was going to buy a fucking iPhone and capitulate to you. And I go, I, I'm not going to, I just, I want the fucking iPhone. I don't want phone service. I just want a phone that I can fill up with footage yeah. and hand to Chaley and he can do whatever the fuck he wants with this stupid fucking phone. I don't want to call anyone. I don't want a monthly service. That's what that's what we do with your the old iPhone you had that you that you didn't want. I use that to record um, podcasts when we're on the road, uh, video podcasts like when we were in Tennessee. I set it up and then and I don't have any phone service on it. I just have internet. So you're right there. You're almost there, Doug. Your hair. I know it keeps going in and out. Yeah, when it, but when it goes out, you look somewhere between Tom Rhodes and Polly Shore. What? But then, it, but it's all combed back. But the yellow part. I is, know it's just it's really wispy because it's all yeah. Well, it should be. Yeah. Meow. Meow. Me like. When are you when are you gonna be put to sleep? Tomorrow. All right, let's get out of here. All right. Well, I hope you have a great trip. And, I uh, uh, just, listen, you, you know, if you I, report I have a fucking betting app that is gonna be a sponsor, but in the meantime, it's kind of kicking ass. That you know how uh, and I. It's hard to say this, but Chaley, you know, there's some travel things that we never bring up on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, well, if we told a lot of people that whole best kept secret thing. Yeah. yeah. If you tell everyone to do this, then it's not a thing because it's about expedience. This is like, okay, if you tell everyone about this, it'll change the fucking betting lines and fuck it up. But we're not that popular. So it's still a secret. If you tell all yeah, of no one's going to go, Oh, Doug Stanhope is fucking winning a lot of money because of this betting app. So I think I, by next podcast, we'll be taught. Well, I'll be talking about it. Yeah. Regardless. I mean, your, your results may vary, but Doug is, uh, Doug is finding uh success in, uh, in his, uh, and, oh, no, it, yeah, this is not like some fucking cunt going, oh, I got that stone cold lock of the week. <laughs> and and because that was a scam in Vegas back when I did toner, I toyed with there were so many uh, where they'd go, oh, yes, this is I'm right here in Vegas and I'm Tony the fucking Tucker and I got all the hottest picks in the fucking thing. And so they would take all these callers would call in and they go, so my $500 special and they'd give half the people one team and half the other. And then yeah. half of them were going to go, this guy's good. This yep. guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a good scam. I know it's a fucking great. There's so many great scams. The invention scam was great. Uh, that's why I want to have the guy from fucking telemarketers, telemarketers yeah. HBO max, whatever. You should reach stuff. out to him. He, no, he reached out to me. Oh, there I, you I, go. I tweeted it. I, I, I didn't want to go into the long form of, Hey, my producer's in a different place. I'm going to be in a train. So I don't even know if they're going to have internet access, which evidently Amtrak does. Amtrak does. Yeah. It does not. It does. Uh, wait, it had, Oh no. We were in Canada. Depends on where you're yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, but I, I would love to get, because Tom Kanopka knows the exact scam they were doing, which was the police fraternity scam. Wait, do you remember Tom? Tom didn't like to talk too much about telemarketing, remember? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did when I picked him up the other day. I saw him oh, okay. up the street, and he's like, "Yeah, no, I know, I know all about that." And then I'm like, "No, you gotta, uh, you gotta understand. Telemarketers, they go to where they like they perfected this kind of like uh, no, way better than I did in ad specs, where yeah. they were setting up in impoverished areas where they they would recruit telemarketers." from uh, uh, parole offices where you need uh, jobs for these guys. Well, we got it. So these guys had to fucking smile and dial and fucking hit their numbers or otherwise uh, you're going back to fucking prison. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. And they're partying and snorting Coke off of fucking telephones. It was every reason I loved like fraud telemarketing. When I say I did fraud telemarketing, people, think that means oh yeah it's uh oh you're gonna get a big discount no no this was literally like stealing from people it was not quite nigerian fucking print uh, yeah but it was lottery winner i mean i i got out before uh, friends did uh prison or halfway house time so it wasn't legit. It, it wasn't fraudulent. Like, uh, hey, that's a uh, that the uh, buy one get one free at Safeway. Well, they doubled the price over the weekend, so it's not really me. All right, I'm gonna go. I got two more days to pack perfectly for fucking basically six days of Amtrak tiny room travel. Yeah. But the four days in Chicago, hey, jump on either one of those trains. Texas Eagle leaves Tucson August 28th. Leaves Chicago coming back to Tucson on September 3rd. And I, I checked it out yesterday. Still, uh, you could actually go round trip on that itinerary. I should teach a comedy class. Did I hang up on you? Are you there? I'm here. Okay. How yeah. Do, do you not see me on your? No. I. I. I you, here's what I did: is I hit a button. Yeah. And I didn't know I'd disappear. Yeah. Okay. I'll teach a comedy class if you're on the, uh, the train for. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, I, I I probably will not leave my 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 concubine. My con- no, that's not the word. Your cubicle. Yeah, cubicle. All right. Well, um, I miss you, and uh, I really would like to see some uh, updates on the house. But I guess I'll talk to Raider about that because he knows how to send things on his phone. I I I came back from Tucson, and the, they were shut down at twelve fifty six p.m. Like. Uh, they're, I don't know if they've been in there. You get a check from Audible. What the fuck? Are you doing books on tape? From Audible. It's probably yeah. it's probably for uh, Bingo's book. All right. Yeah. Well, let's not release. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like your it's like your checks from SAG. From SAG after. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like twelve dollars <laughs> for selling, you know whatever yeah. it, 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 did, it did come up hey is, oh yeah it's a, that's another thing i don't know what's for sale i'm answering these emails i have a big fucking assortment of things i can't wait we should do one of the first things we should do when we have the initial welcome back grand reopening all new brand new doug Stano podcast and house and fun house all of these things and the new podcast studio one of the things should be us having a business meeting about what's for sale what's like well i mean doug i mean you do know how to get on the internet everything that's for sale is online at stanhope store you just go to the web- website dougstanhope.com and there's yeah a- but i don't know if they're ever selling that it's not gonna tell me we sell hey, stuff all week long people make this. orders like, uh, all, everything that's online is available we sell it well before the meeting i will do research i'm prepping you months but, out I mean, people buy things every day on the website i don't know why you think wait how do they sell rollout. how are they buying them when our fucking merch person 
Because Denise this... does the merch while Tracy's out of town. Well, all right. You hire but... locally, dude. Maybe I would know that if I had uh, security cameras in my hotel in Tucson, that oh, yeah, I would true. see someone going into uh, not even my property to the merch house. I didn't know that merch is, I thought merch is probably maybe just hung up till f- future. No way, man. All right. That's why that's why I got that screen printer because I'm going to start screen printing the work shirts. I, I, I over here at the Bingo's Quiet House, I have that uh, 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 Bisbee Booze Bags mug, and I go, oh, that's way better than the Fun House mug, but not as good a color. So yeah, we'll have all these meetings. Uh, I like uh, maybe we have maybe we do this. Maybe we have a. Uh, uh, like a junket, what do they, the, a weekend where, like on Saturday, when we went to the judges thing up in Phoenix. The convention we went to up in Phoenix. Yeah. Imagine a, a smaller version of that where it's only us or the Libertarian Party thing that we just did. But the only presentations are like Saturday at 1 p.m., we're going to go to the merch. It's the Doug Stanhope convention and we just go somewhere ridiculous but but like i'll have a presentation of how i can see my comedy career moving forward without being funny <laughs> and then bingo could uh, give a yeah it's yeah you know, like our company christmas party that we do uh try annually quad annually anyway We'll work on it. Uh, and uh, don't forget, uh, September 15th, Doug will be hosting a comedy show at the Shady Dell. Tickets are available at bwdtour.com, which is Billy Wayne Davis's uh, website. Tickets are available there. Then uh, the links are up here right now, so you can look at it, and they'll be in the show notes as well. And that's Andy Andrus, Christine Levine, Billy Wayne Davis headlining, and Doug Stanhope hosting. Yeah, I just saw that. I think I wrote something about that. I was on the, uh, I was very high and uh, whining and uh, the red wine. And uh, uh, the, I don't know why I'm not on this all the time is Reddit. Is a Doug stand up Reddit thing. And I'm like, oh, this is so much better than fucking Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. Twitter has gone so fucked for me that I like, there's people you go, all right, really? And I go, I, I don't want to start any fights until I have fucking ammunition to back I up. I deleted it. I, I haven't been on Twitter in uh, three weeks. I, yeah. I go on it to uh, post the link for the show, but I don't go on to, uh, I, it just, I, I, I do that through Patreon. Yeah, so I, I, I don't have it I, on my phone. I share bets with Brendan Walsh where I'm like, all right, this guy, or not this guy, this fucking machine. If you can fucking win 50%, I mean, 57%, you're fucking destroying. Yeah. And that's why I went back and I did math, which I I don't do very often. I'm like, all right, let me go back. Since I've been watching this, knowing eventually, I'm like, uh, this fucking shit's so far for real. 57% wins in a month. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Bingo, here you go. Okay, bye-bye now.